Every hero needs a villain. In their search for the mask of creation, the Toa must face enemies raised from the dead. This is Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 5. Kulta, the Skull Grinder, and Ikimu, the Mask Maker. Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week, the resurrection of evil. Day 5, where we'll be taking a look at Mask Maker vs. Skull Grinder. This is the largest set we have gotten for Bionicle 2015, and is the last set for the Summer Wave for 2015. This set is set number 70795, and is 171 pieces, and includes Ikimu the Mask Maker and Cult of the Skull Grinder, as well as the Mask of Creation. As you can see, they're battling it out at the forge here on the front cover. It's also a larger box, and it is all squared off, which is pretty neat. Now, on the back here, you can see how their functions work, and you can also check out the comic here. Now, the thing with the, the set is that it is technically two different sets, because it is a protector-sized Akimu and a Toa-sized Skull Grinder. And because of that, it is $30. So it is the most expensive set in the line so far, and... Let's see if it's worth it. So we'll begin by taking a look at Akimu. Akimu is the mask maker, the one who has a brother named Makuta, which had the big battle that caused the ancient city to get be partially destroyed. Now as you can see, Akimu here is a protector sized, so he has a smaller set, but he is not as basic as the protectors. The protectors featured no gearboxes and were very simplified. This guy has a lot more armored and actually does feature a gear function which is pretty nice overall. As you can see, his limbs are transparent blue, which mixed with the transparent chest. He is the most consistent color scheme-wise for this wave so far, and it's really, really, really nice. As you can see, he's gold and blue with silver accents. And that's all he needs to be. No awkward red pins showing. We got a blue pin back here and a red one on his head, but it's not really a big deal. And you really don't have too much other discrepancies. No random shoulder bits. Really cool overall. Now, what's also of note, as you can see, in the base form here, Akimu is wearing a golden protector mask, which is gold and transparent blue, as you can see there. It is pretty neat overall. That mask is supposedly coming with the activity book that's coming out later in the year as well, so interesting. But as you can see, he's really nice. Now, articulation-wise, he's got the ball joint neck. He's got shoulders, he's got elbows, he's got wrists, hips, knees, and ankles. So he's got the full range movement. Plus he does feature a function, which is his arm does swing, which is really nice. Now of course he does feature a couple of weapons. As you can see he does have a saw blade shield and much like the uh, protector of ice, Isotor, he does is able to spin using a gear here. And it works quite well. I love the design. It's got kind of a spiral look to it. When it spins, you can also just do that as well if you'd like. Really cool overall, but his other weapon's a little more impressive. And that's because his other weapon is his hammer. Now this is his hammer he uses to forge masks, but it also has a special function. As you can see, if you turn the back section here, it does have the bullet firing gimmick that the other protectors have. Which is really, really cool. They not only worked in the hammer, but they also gave him the firing gimmick of lose a bunch of Lego studs. So he is consistent with the other protectors. And as you can see, this is the reason why his gear function exists. So he can swing the hammer. Which works really well. Now I gotta go find that missing bullet. But yeah, Ikimu's pretty neat for a little set here. Now of course, Ikimu does look very good put next to his protector brethren. Narmoto. Kivota. Vizina. Korgat. Nilku, and Isator. They look very good as a set of seven, as you have the six protectors from each region, and the mask maker who created their masks. Really cool to see all these guys. They're all about the same size. Ikimu encompasses all the great engineering from all the best of the protectors, and puts it into one set, which is really cool overall. Say hello to Kulta the Skull Grinder, our main villain for the year. He is the largest of the Skull Villains, is the reason they revived, and is also the one who is trying to get the Mask of Creation. As you can see, he looks quite impressive. Outside of some thinness, because he is skeletal, 
He is very, very stocky and very big. Also, consistent color scheme. Orange, silver, that's it. They did not try to do the random orange pad thing. But, some could argue that maybe he had orange armor here and here, and he gave one each to the skull villains in order to revive them. It's an idea. But anyways, here is Skull Grinder. Now, Skull Grinder looks quite, quite cool overall. He is quite large, like I said. Here he is next to Tahu, who was the tallest of the Toa. So you can see that he is on scale with the Toa, if a little bit taller even, which is really cool. Overall, Skull Grinder is really neat. He does have these really cool horns up here. As you can see, he does have the same mask as the Skull Warrior, like I said. And these horns, of course, can be hit and knock his mask off, which can be handy for a little Kimu who's going to have to go all Yoda on this guy. So, really neat. I also do like his chest uh, design here. Looks really cool. Articulation-wise, head, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, ankles. So he's got the full range. Plus he does have a double armed gear function, which works quite well with like several different gears inside here, which is really, really neat. So he's got moving arms. That's about it. He has no weapons. Just kidding. He has a cool weapon. First of all, he has a smaller sword piece, which I'm half tempted to give to Slicer so he can have four consistent arms. Plus, you get the giant mask grabber claw. This is made up of three of the Scorpio tail pieces slash basher sword pieces. And this pretty much grabs any mask you want. All you've got to do is just run this thing over a mask and take it off. That's it. You don't really have to line things up. It doesn't have to be precise. And it's not complicated involving the gear function. You just ram it into a face and rip the mask off. Because as you can see, it works with pretty much any Toa. You just gotta like grab this thing on here and just rip the mask off. It's a little trickier with the smaller masks, but still, it's effective. So overall, Skull Grinder is just great. He's big, he's blocky, he just rams things with his staff and rips masks free. His color scheme is the most consistent out of all the villains. And I just really dig him. He's really cool overall. And would made a great set by himself, but the fact he also includes a Kimu is really cool. But that's not all this set includes. We have one special item. Here it is, the Mask of Creation. The first thing we saw for Bionicle 2015 is finally in our hands. And I'm glad it didn't take years for it to come out, unlike the Mask of Life, which took a long time to come out. But as you can see, it does have its own little stand here, as it is part of the set. As you can see, it's got a stand, a little uh, clear piece, and on top, a holder. Now, the holder, I think, is supposed to be designed so that you just take the mask and clip it on here, but then it kind of droops down. So I just kind of, like, raise it up a little bit so it holds about there. But this mask, of course, can be used by anyone. But specifically, you can give it to Kulta so he can realize his freakish desires for controlling all of the world. Or you can give it to Akimu to restore his full power so he can once again create masks for the Toa, Protectors, and the Villagers of Okoto. Overall, I think the Skull Grinder vs. Mask Maker set is fantastic. It is a great set. Akimu and Kulta are both really solid. Kulta is a full-size villain. Akimu is a regular protector that has a gear function. It's really great to see a set like this. I really hope we get another one of these two packs in the future because this is a great way of selling a smaller character with a larger one, especially when it's a battle in the box kind of thing. Plus, we finally got the Mask of Creation, which is really cool, and I'm glad to see it, you know, in plastic form. So overall, really happy with this set, and this is the last set we get for Bionicle until the Winter 2016 wave. But overall, really happy. Now, of course, Bionicle Week, the Resurrection of Evil, is not over, and we will not be looking at all the sets at once at the moment, I do want to go over the two combination sets. One with Skull Warrior, Skull Basher, and Skull Slicer, and one with Skull Grinder, Mask Maker, and Skull Scorpio. So, in order to do those, we need to take a look at those individually. So stay tuned for tomorrow, we'll take a look at the Slicer, Basher, Warrior combo. And on Sunday, we'll be taking a look at the Grinder, Maker, Scorpio combo. And... Until then, be sure to check out three videos a week here on Soundout 12, Model Kit Monday on Mondays, Soundout's Toy Chest Mystery Review Series on Thursdays, and the Soundout Review on Saturdays. Also check out HeroTaki.com for all your Bionicle news and more. Until next time, this is Soundout saying goodbye. <laughs>